The other day I put an invitation out to my community asking them to ask me anything about ADHD and what they're struggling with and so many of you came back with stories about imposter syndrome. So I thought as I get ready for the day today that I would turn on my camera and say a few words about imposter syndrome. Let's start out reading some of the things that I got because I think they're going to sound very familiar. The first comment comes from Erin and she deals with imposter syndrome at work. She says my imposter syndrome loves to point out the way my ADHD affects my work performance and it's exhausting. I'm scared that if I don't resolve it, I might lose my job and it's a good one. I'm a marketing communications manager. Then Amy chimes in and says the extreme tiredness and fatigue that comes along with it, also being rejection sensitive and not ruminating about work comments or relationships. And then finally, Travis adds that sometimes the OCD that he also experiences turns into overthinking and causes him to shut down on a task because he's thinking too far ahead of all the potential problems instead of focusing on the next action towards completion. So if any of those sound familiar, then <laughs> know that you are not alone. We all feel it. Actually, studies show that at least 82% of adults feel some sense of imposter syndrome on the job. But the interesting tidbit to that is that the majority of people who feel imposter syndrome are actually high achievers. So what this means is that very often it's our own expectations of our work performance are so high that even we can't achieve it. Right? So let's talk about what imposter syndrome really is, and then we'll dive into some strategies that might be helpful in terms of battling it, particularly on the job. So imposter syndrome is a feeling of not being worthy enough for the task at hand. So you have this pending feeling like somebody's going to find out that you don't know what you're doing and you're going to get called out or fired and that you have no right to be where you are. And again, very often those feelings are coming from a place of very high expectations of where your work should be and very often they're unreasonable. Now everyone feels imposter syndrome. Like I said, 82% of adults feel it on the job at some point or another. However, add to that when you have ADHD and you have that layer of RSD, which stands for rejection sensitive dysphoria and ruminating thoughts, it can really make you spin out on the job. And the thing is, if you don't get a handle on it, it can lead to depression, anxiety, and burnout on the job. So it's really important that we address these feelings. And the first thing that I would say about imposter syndrome is if it's really inhibiting you to the point where you can't even do your job, then if you have access to therapy, I definitely think that's the best first course of action because there's a lot of cognitive free frames that you can use to move yourself out of the paralysis that you feel. Because if you stay in that sense of paralysis and your emotions are hijacked, then you don't have access to your prefrontal cortex. You're not going to do great work and you're going to self-sabotage yourself, right? And I think that therapy is obviously a great place to address that. Now, not all of us have access to therapy and I want to give you some quick wins today. So first, let's start with a couple of tools that I have found really helpful. Now, what we know about ADHDers is that we're not really good at processing things in our head. We really need to get things out on paper and externalize them in order to think through them. So the first thing that I would recommend you do if you start getting into this spin out of imposter syndrome is to go back to your desk or cubicle or wherever you are at work and grab a piece of paper and a pen and start writing down what's happening in your brain. So some prompts you might want to ask is why am I feeling imposter syndrome and what is this feeling coming from? What's triggering it? Is it something that was being asked of me that I don't think I can do? Or is it a person or an activity at your job that really triggers you? Being asked to present at a meeting or maybe there's a person at your job that makes you feel super impostery. Write that down so you know where the trigger is coming from. Now, once you've got it all written down, I want you to look at your paper, read it and ask yourself realistically, am I really not capable of doing this job 
or is this an emotional reaction to something that's going on? Because once you know what's going on and what's triggering it, then you can address it. Well, let's first address that very rare instance where you are not skilled to either do a part of your job or you feel completely incompetent to do the whole thing. Let's examine that. First of all, would you have been hired for the job if you were truly not skilled enough to do it? Do you really think that you are that skilled to pull a fast one on all of the hiring team that decided to put you into this role in the first place? Now, if you really do feel like you don't have the skill, the next thing you wanna do is identify that skill gap. Instead of getting emotional about this experience, ask yourself logically, what is the skill gap that I don't feel confident about? Is it writing? Is it coding? Is it presenting? What is it specifically? And is there a way that you can close that skill gap? Now there's this thing called the rule of 100 and it implies that if you spend 100 hours of very intentional focused training, you can learn something that would make you even more skilled than the average expert in a field. Now, I'm sure that's not true of all things. I'm sure you can't learn brain surgery in 100 hours, but you probably could learn public speaking skills or a particular style of coding. There's a lot of specific skills that if you take the time and energy to learn them, you can close that skill gap. Think about uh, LinkedIn learning, podcasts, YouTube, books. There's so many ways for you to close a skill gap on your own that I think is worth exploring if that is truly the problem. Now, what I think it is for most ADHDers is not that we have a skill gap. It's that we have an ambiguity problem or a self-trust problem. Let me break both of those down. Many ADHDers struggle with self-trust. Because we've tried and failed at things in the past, we believe that we're just not good at anything. But the majority of reasons why we fail, if you really look at it, is that we take on more than we're capable of taking on from an energy and focus perspective, and then things fall by the wayside. It's really rarely about a skill gap that we take something on and we don't know how to do it or we can't do it, so we drop it. However, our short-term memory likes to think that's the case, so it tells us then we're just not good at things and therefore we drop them and move on. But if you really think about it, it's rarely that skill gap and it's more about a dysregulation of attention and not being able to focus on one thing long enough to get skilled at it. So knowing that is actually a powerful thing because once you can question where that lack of self-trust is coming from, you can push the boundary of it. If at work you're feeling impostery because your boss asked you to do a report and you lack self-trust, now you can say to yourself, okay, is it that I can't do the report or is it that I don't trust myself to do the report? And if that's the case, ask yourself, what kind of support do I need to actually work through this problem? Do I need a quiet place where I can work on it? Do I need to ask more questions about the task at hand? This is where I get to the next point around ambiguity. ADHDers, when we are not clear on what's required of us and we're not sure what we're doing, that leads us into this sort of pit of ambiguity where our mind takes over and starts answering questions for us with assumptions, and usually they are very negative in flavor. A neurotypical, if they don't fully quite understand what's being asked of them, is more likely to have the attention in the moment to ask questions like, what exactly do you need here? And what are we optimizing for? And what does a good outcome look like? Whereas an ADHD or because our attention isn't necessarily on the task at hand, is back here somewhere telling us that we don't know how to do the job, in the moment we don't ask the right question. So then we go back to our desk and we're like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. And then I start stressing out and I can't even get started, much less finish the job. So in those moments, the best thing you can do is is advocate for yourself by going back to the source of whatever it is you're being tasked with, maybe that's your manager who's giving you a job, and start asking questions that will fill in those blanks. Questions like, what is the outcome of this project? And what are we optimizing for here? Who is the audience for it? And what is the persuasive end goal that we're trying to achieve? How long do you want it to be? Do you have any examples of things in the past that have worked really well? And what does success look like? When do you need this by? And 
And also, can I share a rough draft with you as I'm working through it so I know I'm on the right track? I know that might sound like a lot of questions and I know if you're already mired in imposter syndrome, it might feel very scary to do that. But what's worse, asking your boss for clarity or spinning at your desk and not actually getting the thing done? I can tell you as somebody who's managed people in the past and also as a business owner, if I give somebody a task, I would much rather they ask me a bunch of questions to help me clarify in my mind and also help guide them than them just going away and making assumptions and bringing back something that I didn't want or ask for because that's a waste of money and a waste of time. So advocate for yourself by asking clarifying questions if it's a specific project or task that you're feeling impostery about. Now let's say your imposter syndrome is more generalized and you're feeling triggered by imposter syndrome all the time. In that case, I would point you back to that first exercise where you want to start getting clarity on what specifically is causing the imposter syndrome. I would also encourage you to reframe the feeling. Like if you're always feeling like, oh, I'm going to get caught and people are going to know that I don't quite know what I'm doing and I'm making things up as I go along, I want you to pause and realize that the root of that emotion is coming from a place of caring about your work. Remember what I said earlier, most people that feel imposter syndrome are actually high achievers whose expectations of their own work are just completely out of line with reality. So pause for a minute and ask yourself, am I putting expectations on myself that aren't possible? And look around at your colleagues, take an honest Look, is anybody else in your office that super duper smart that you look like a complete and utter failure when you position yourself beside them? That is unlikely the case. And even if people in your office are more skilled in certain ways, that doesn't mean that you weren't hired for your own specific talents and strengths. So again, this comes back to ambiguity. Make sure that you've got a good enough relationship with your boss that you can have candid conversations about what you're doing well and the areas where you can improve. Now, when you're asking questions like that, you also want to be aware of potential RSD flare-ups where maybe you ask, where am I screwing up? And your boss tells you, and all of a sudden you have a complete meltdown in your chair. You don't want to frame questions like that. You want to frame questions in a way that is both constructive and helps you improve. So you might want to ask, what does success look like in this role? What are things that I'm doing well that you'd like me to double down on? What are areas where you would like me to focus more of my intention and effort so that we get better results? Those sort of questions are going to impress your boss and they're going to make you look like a thoughtful employee. And they're also going to frame the responses in a way that's going to feel less personal and more constructive. Aim your questions on the role and how you can improve effectiveness in the role rather than questions about you and your personal performance. Now, here's something that I learned during my time in corporate. Feedback can actually be a really powerful thing. I'm not, again, I'm not necessarily talking about feedback as how are you doing an employee, but feedback in terms of project execution. So if I was working on a project and I was starting to feel impostery, I would tag my boss in a document that I was working on and ask questions as I was going along. That way my boss could see the direction that I was going in and be able to flag any issues before I started getting too far down a project where I was going in a completely wrong direction. As I started getting that feedback, it would help clarify the direction I was going in, which would then raise my confidence. And the more confidence you have, the less imposter syndrome you're going to feel. That was just a little trick that I use and it really helped me. But I think the same can be true of any job. If you are working on something and you're feeling impostery, ask yourself, where am I lacking confidence and what questions can I ask to get the clarity I need to improve my confidence and keep moving forward? At the end of the day, particularly for those of us with ADHD, managing things like imposter syndrome and RSD 
on the job comes down to emotional regulation. So one part of that is gaining the confidence you need to move forward on a project. So again, asking for examples, asking skillful questions about the project and not necessarily getting feedback on yourself, and also using tools like ChatGBT. There are so many AI tools out there where you can just put in a prompt, like I'm a marketing manager at a SaaS startup and I've been asked to create a roadmap for a product launch, but I've never actually done it before. Here's a little bit about the product and when we want to launch it, here's who the audience is. Create an outline for a product launch based on X budget and then see what it gives you. It's probably gonna give you trash, but at least it's something that you can start from. Very often, just starting with a template or an idea or an example is enough to give your brain something to get started on. The other thing I love doing when I'm feeling overwhelmed when I'm at work is heart coherence breathing. And I love doing this because nobody has to know that you're doing it. I've talked about it before, but basically all you do is start to slow your breath down. Inhales and exhales at about five counts each. And as you're doing that, breathe into your heart and lung area. So really focus your attention on that area as you're breathing in and out in a slow and rhythmic manner. What that's going to do is slow your heart rate down, it's going to bring you into heart brain coherence, and it's going to calm your amygdala. So you'll have better access to your prefrontal cortex where you can be more productive and actually get started on a task and follow through on it. So it's really important to have those tools you can use in the moment and also managing your state overall by making sure that you're sleeping well, getting movement every day, staying hydrated, getting outside every day. Those basic fundamental habits are gonna help you manage your state overall. And then these little micro tools like heart coherence breathing are gonna help you in the moment when those feelings of imposter syndrome come up and you literally can't focus on anything else. So just to recap everything we've said, get clear on what it is that's causing your imposter syndrome, whether it's a task, a responsibility, or someone in your office. Ask yourself, what is causing it? And is there a skill gap that I can work on in my own time to increase my confidence and lower that feeling? Also remember that those feelings come up because you care about your work and you're probably a very high performer. Look around at the people around you. Are they doing such a great job that you are really as terrible as you think you are? And if what you're struggling with is really ambiguity, do yourself a favor and ask questions, get examples, make sure you know exactly what it is that's expected of you that's gonna help you raise your confidence and lower those imposter feelings. And finally, remember those tools like ChatGBT that will give you something to start with and also heart coherence breathing that will help you manage those imposter feelings in the moment so that you can focus on what it is you're doing. I hope you found that helpful, guys. If you did, make sure you hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.